um, sales people who belong to organizations where there are very few restrictions and you know so, so like insurance companies and all. So they started uh, researching Prudential and they said okay that's a good place to study. So they started looking at all the people and they saw that uh, bottom 80 struggling 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 top 20 better 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 and now we look at the top 4 and they started looking at the top 4 performers and they saw that they were outperforming the bottom 80 of course they were outperforming right. But by how much? That's the big question mark. Uh, so any guesses how much if the bottom 80 are doing X the top 4 would be doing uh, some more? How much more? Go on, let's open up. 2 times? 10 times? 10 times right more like it right? Hmm? I mean that's exactly what I thought it will be 10 times. But the exact figure was the top 4 were outperforming the bottom 80 by a whopping 54 times. Okay. Now I don't know whether it sounds big or maybe it does sound big. But look at the difference in the lives of these two people. The person who is in the top 4 versus the person in the bottom 80. Now you know what when this research came out they were a little confused. These professors thought ke nahi nahi kuch to hai. <laughs> you know the students who are helping us out they must have done some uh, error in the calculation and the stats were like not so good and all that. So you know what they just said <laughs> forget about it. Hmm? They took all that research and they gave it to pure researchers ok not professors not students people who like making a living out of research ok they gave it to a few other people and these people came back to them and they said gentlemen what you discovered is not a quote unquote phenomena of sales anyway. It's not something relevant to potential. What you have found out is actually a universal phenomena. It's a law of nature. It's true for every profession. It's true for every organization. Look all around you. It's true everywhere. I mean, let's talk about it step by step. Let's talk about professions. Okay. Uh, okay. We are in Mumbai. Every street in Mumbai would have at least a dozen doctors. I mean maybe even more but how many of them are so famous so good that you are willing to wait 3-3 three, three months to get a 15 minute slot it will come down to a handful right. Architects I mean you will have dozens of architects if not in every street every other street at least but how many of them are Hafiz contractors it all goes back to just a very few most of them are struggling. Okay, now forget professions. Let's even talk about wealth. Hmm? Uh, would you agree that uh, one or two or three percent population has 95, 96, 97 percent of the earth's wealth? Would you agree? Uh, in India, it's true, right? Or it was at least true till 8 November, right? Huh? <laughs> I, you, you know, here's the funny part you take all the wealth from people and you just distribute it evenly. Or, or you just, just just take it away from everybody. It said that it will go back to those few people again. Of course, uh, in the corporate world, it becomes very difficult to measure. I'm repeating that for emphasis. But my question is, if you look at these bottom 80 and the top 4 percent, they're producing so much more. Now let's talk about happiness and let's talk about fulfillment and let's talk about stress. Who's more stressed, the bottom 80 or the top 4? Bottom 80? Top 4. What do you all think? Come on. Is it bottom 80 or top 4? Bottom 80? Okay. I mean, who is quote unquote working harder? Bottom 80? Okay. Who is the one who is spending more overtime? Bottom 80? Who is happier? Top 4? Oh. Now, come on, it doesn't sound right, man. It just doesn't sound right. Asa kaise ho sakta hai? Asa kaise ho sakta hai? Huh? Just doesn't sound right. But you know what? It seemed, seemed to be true. The top four were the ones who seemed to be the most well adjusted. They were the ones who seemed to be happier. Now, see, there is no measurement of, there's no, you can't really measure it. It just appears that they are a lot more happy. They are the ones uh, who have better relationships, I guess. And I use the word ships, huh? <laughs> okay? Uh, I mean, everything seemed to be better in the top four. Now my question is, 
why why this huge difference and and, and uh, okay there is a huge difference in your opinion what would be the big difference between the top 4 and bottom 80 okay okay all right Awesome, awesome, awesome. They, they are, their capacity to take stress and risk is much higher. Okay. Any other reason? Why why is such a big difference? And it's true all, all around. See, it could also be your uh, challenges which you like to take. Okay. The way of risk. The the way Super. You, you know, plan a strategy. The way the money came out of an IPO and suddenly became a billionaire. He had the potential, but he utilized it. Okay. And, and so it is how well you plan establish yourself. So better planning, strategy, strategy risk, risk, which is exactly what she said. Motivation. Okay. And the challenges you like Superb. Now you know what? Every word which is coming out is of course true. Of course, yeah. I mean we can all add words like passion and, and, and energy and all of that. Of course, all of this is true. But the thing is even the last guy, the hundred guy knows this. <laughs> Am I right? Even the hundred guy knows that, hey man, I got to be a better planner and I need to have better risk appetite and you know what? I need to have more passion, more energy. Everybody knows it. But what's the real difference? Uh, okay, even the last guy knows. I mean, I do the Right? But what's the real difference? No. They're able to act, right? Okay. So now, let me go back to 1971. They were asking this question. Then man, this doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound right that these few people, they are producing so massive results. They are happier. They are more well adjusted. They are living in heaven. While everything about these people is like hellish. Let's look at hypothesis. It must be knowledge. And we all know that's never the case. Right? It was an education. It wasn't even an experience. So what was it? And after digging a lot, they all came out with one conclusion. And they summarized it by using one word. And they said, the difference between the top four and the bottom 80 all boils down to patterns. Now, it's not a very hot sounding word. Patterns, we understand patterns, right? But what do we mean by patterns? And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in the next couple of hours. Patterns. Now, for that, I'm going to be a little cosmic. Okay? A little cosmic, nothing major. Don't get spooked. <laughs> so let's look at this universe. Um, do you realize the entire universe is nothing but working on patterns? I mean, we know precisely or at least the weather department can with absolute precision tell what time we are going to have sunset today in the evening what time we're going to have sunrise in the morning tomorrow and it's precision right it's absolutely spot on how come because they understand it's a pattern laws of universe are so precise that we can send a mangalyan Okay, we can send it all the way to the mass orbit and we can tell at what second it's going to touch the orbit. Why? Because there are patterns and all we are using are those patterns to launch the satellite there or whatever it is. Make sense? In fact, you know, I'm not even a good guy to talk about patterns. You know, who's the best guy? Uh, whenever you can get the, uh, you know, just, just go to YouTube and just type out Stephen Hawkins. You know, that living legend. Hawkins, I mean, it's the guy who wrote uh, a Brief History of Time and yeah, yeah the theory of everything, you know. I mean, you know what? Um, as kids, we used to look at Einstein and we used to see his photograph in schools. I have a feeling that uh, give it some time, you'll along with Einstein, you'll have Stephen Hawkins' photograph and a very big one because this guy is so awesome. I mean, he is gifting us with so much every now and then. Now, what does he say? Even he says the same thing. He says 
uh, and I don't understand exactly everything that he says. Huh? He talks about quantum physics and all that. He says, you know, just just look at the universe. It's made out of energy and it's made out of time. And uh, you know, you look at energy and you'll see neutrons and protons. And you know, some disappear, some appear. Now, to somebody who doesn't understand it, he or she may think this is random, yeah. This is all random. But to somebody who studied it, nothing is random. Everything is a perfect pattern. Got it? Now, I'm going to say something. Aren't we a part of this universe? We're just blended in with the universe, right? I want to say this in Hindi because it sounds so much more hotter. Huh? Hum is Brahman ke ek anshi to hai. See, it's so much better than saying we are part of the universe. <laughs> right? It just, so, it just sounds hotter, man. It just sounds so good. Now, since you and I are part of this universe, as a human being, won't you and I also be governed by some patterns? Right? Now let's look at the patterns. I'll talk about three patterns. The first patterns are patterns of thoughts. Okay? Um, you know how many thoughts we have in a day? We all have thoughts in a day, right? How many we have in a day? It's documented that we've got 60,000 thoughts in a day. Okay, 60,000. An average human being? Okay, some more, some less, whatever. 60,000 thoughts in a day. That's cool, no problem at all. But you know what's the best part? Out of the 60,000 thoughts, 95% of the thoughts are similar every day. Isn't that cool? I'm, uh, understandably, there's something very bombastic happening in a particular day. Uh, yes, then the thoughts could be different. But if you're averaging it out, the thoughts are pretty similar every day. Now that's a pattern. Now ladies and gentlemen, what do thoughts lead to? Not bad. Awesome. So thoughts lead to? She said it but I don't know if heard it. Thoughts lead to what? Oh, she said, okay, I'll give it to you. Thoughts lead to emotions. Well, actually, there's one thing. Thoughts lead to what? I mean, memories create thoughts, right? Okay, well, let's, let's say. Thoughts lead to emotions, okay? Now, my question is, if 95% of the thoughts are similar every day, does that mean, by and large, our emotion would remain, would remain similar? It would, right? Which means a happy person, by and large, remains happy. A sad soul, I, I would use a different word, a dukhi atma will remain dukhi, by and large. Would you agree? Now you take a dukhi atma, give that person a triple promotion. How long do you think he or she will be happy? Sometime? Thoda time to do do, yaar. Okay, okay, fine. Forget a promotion. You take a dukhi atma and you give that person or, or make that person win a lottery. Okay, uh, an absolute. I mean, nothing major, maybe 10, 15 crores, whatever. Jo bhi hai, huh? Huh? And that guy wins the lottery. Do you think he'll be happy? Of course he'll be happy. He will jump, he'll dance, he'll even throw a party. All you have to do is go to him and tell him, is cut tax kata lagega? And the guy will be on depression pills. Uh, are you getting it? Done. Gaya. And he'll row, row, okay, he'll come to you <laughs> for some counseling. <laughs> and he'll tell you, Mere char crore gaye. Uh, he won't tell you that sat art crore gaye. <laughs> ah. All right. So that's, that's a good input. But that's for a dukhi atma, right? <laughs> By and large. Okay, now, oh yeah, thoughts lead to emotions, emotions lead to, finally, actions. Now, what these guys found out, it is in the actions where the rubber meets the road. It's in the actions where the rubber meets the road. This is where the real stuff happens. Okay, it's the patterns of actions that actually help you either achieve something, or well, your patterns 
make you achieve nothing at all and in every area let's talk about it step by step okay we will not even get into the corporate world for the time being we will just talk about general stuff take any area of life let's talk about health okay um, one of my favorite examples it's so simple that's why let's say we've got two people guy A guy B okay you got guy A who's like really fit and fine and I mean, I mean how do you define fitness I don't even know how to define fitness but, but let's say uh, okay a six pack guy you know the guy with speed breakers on his tummy right <laughs> okay a real fit chap hmm? and you got guy B without the speed breakers or without the packs or he doesn't have six packs he just has one good one pretty elaborate one now the question is uh, between both these people A and B is it possible ladies and gentlemen that guy B may actually have more knowledge about fitness possible possible right uh, is it possible that guy B is actually a PhD in nutrition <laughs> I mean he knows more about diets than anybody else he is the guy who has gone and enrolled in more gyms he has gone and given annual donations to more gyms than anybody else <laughs> possible right and it's possible that guy A is an illiterate soul he could be somebody who is a worker who doesn't understand anything between like he doesn't what is car he doesn't understand anything he's, just, he's a worker man he's an illiterate guy but what makes him so successful in that area simple his patterns what he does from the time he wakes up in the morning till the time he goes to bed it just supports him make sense so now why did I tell you this long elaborate stuff for two three reasons number one while we at forum have been doing this for now 46 47 years we've been really poor in getting the science out and communicating it I mean we may have only what two or three people who have in this room my friends here my friends here who've got some idea because they've attended but but we've just been so poor in in getting the science out although we've written books on it we've uh, spoken about it uh, but we've just been so, so we thought you know what we would like to just share the science with as many people as possible and you as LND and HR people it just made perfect sense because for us all of LND is nothing but just pattern building I mean from from our perspective so that's what we're going to be talking about in the next um, less than two hours <laughs> right so th so that's why we are here the intention was just to call like-minded people people are in the field of HR and LND and you know your work depends on creating patterns and of course psychotherapists and that's all about pattern building so we thought let's just have a conversation around this so so that's about us well uh, as far as I'm concerned I am Sumit my name is Sumit Sumit Seth uh, and I'm very fortunate enough to be one of the founding members of forum in India we established forums operations in 2008 uh, actually 2009 because 2008 uh, we just got together and we didn't know what to do and we were just like <laughs> figuring out the next steps but 2009 is when we we actually started the operations in uh, in India uh, for the last few years I've been running the organization as the MD of the company in India no big deal it's just a, it's, it's a small boutique company so <laughs> all those things are irrelevant uh, but what do I do well I do multiple things I uh, apart from running the organization I I'm obsessed with pattern development so I talk about this topic anywhere between 8 to 18 days in a month and of course I just don't talk about this topic but uh, we apply this in every field of learning and development and, and I'll show you how we can apply it okay so that's something new which <laughs> Ritu has attended one of the workshops he said same to I said Woi hai by and large lekin thoda alag hai. <laughs> yeah, and I had to tell that to her because she's the member of Jari Hume so we just wanted to keep you here <laughs> okay now so we'll show you actually how you can apply it in absolutely any area but especially in L&D and how you can create real sustained behavior change because otherwise that's all it is um, so that's what I do for 8 to 18 days in a month I'm an executive coach we do a lot of consulting work in sustaining learning so I'm a consultant this is what I do for five days in a week on the sixth day uh, I have taken this pattern development and I have done similar work that you do so I work with cancer patients and very recently I've started doing work with HIV positive people the idea is very simple um, because if they don't create patterns there are some cancers where the possibility of relapse is 70 percent and if you look at the root cause of cancer well not everybody is cracked it, but there are a few people who claim to have cracked it it all goes back to your patterns of life 
uh, and I'll give you some bad news right now, and I'll give you some good news. The bad news is everybody sitting in this room. We all have cancer. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to spook you up. It's a, it's a fact. <laughs> it's just that it's dormant, okay? And and it's it's the patterns of life which can actually give rise to them. Simple. And and if you're talking about HIV positive people, it means nothing today. It means absolutely nothing, okay? Uh, with CART and all those drugs that we have, a person can live a very normal life, can live till mid 70s and maybe even touch 80s. All that person needs to do is just take care of his or her patterns, okay? So what are we going to be doing? So that's about me and that's about forum and that's what we're going to be doing. So happy to be here? Cool? Huh? All right, good. And of course you've met my team and so I will not introduce them and we don't have too much time, but yeah, there we have Ishan and Amit and Harish. Harish has disappeared. Because, oh, there he is. I'm so happy you're still here because he's heard this so many times, he puts earplugs. <laughs> okay. So, now the question to you. Let's open this up. So I've already introduced, I've already started the topic. I've already spoken about patterns. A few questions to you. We spoke about patterns of thoughts, patterns of emotions, and patterns of actions. In your opinion, ladies and gentlemen, which of these three patterns is easiest to change? Okay, thoughts? What do you all feel? Actions? Actions? All right? Okay. Now, you said thoughts? Thoughts, right? Okay, thoughts. Okay, now I'm going to ask a question about thoughts. Um, and this is again a pretty uh, cool question. I love this question. A question to all of you. Um, do you think or do thoughts come to you? Think and tell me. <laughs> oh, think, 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 think for a moment. Think for a moment. <laughs> Okay, so, so what's the answer? Do, do we think or thoughts come to us? Okay, now when you think, why do you think that thing? <laughs> right now you're thinking, right? Or right now the thought has come to you? You're thinking? Come on, okay. Now, there are some people who have done, uh, that's what I whispered in Ishan's clothes. Maybe we can ask them to stop the background music. Huh? Huh? Okay. He's taking care of it, right? Okay, good. So think about it. Uh, there's one person who's done massive research on it. Okay. Uh, I mean, one of the people whom I really believe in spoke about it. Uh, one of his students, Pillay, his name is Dr. Pillay, and his student did a research on thinking. For seven years, he was doing a PhD on thinking. That means for seven years, he was thinking about thinking. That's quite a lot of thought, man. And the one conclusion that they came out with, we actually never think. Thoughts just keep coming to us. Think about it right now. Right now, all of you are thinking about something, right? Why are you thinking what you're thinking? It just came to you, right? It just came to you because I probably asked you a question and it got stimulated. That's all. Yes. You're coming. Right? Awesome. When you observe something, the thought comes to you. Yes. The question comes to your mind. Yes. Between the screen, what for? Yes. Right? So the thought has come. Now, today is there. So thought has come, or I have thought about it. It could be both of us. But when you get into the subconscious mind tomorrow, or maybe night when you're sleeping, since you have thought about it, it comes automatically. So basically the origin, so origin was, could it came to you. <laughs> could be born, it could be a pattern, Okay, could be a okay, so you know the best part, it's a chain. It's a chain. It's such a massive chain, it's just connected. And one leads to another. So, so if, you, if you just go by the people who've done massive research on it, they end up saying, you know what, the best you can do is attract better thoughts. That's all you can do. But you know when you attract better thoughts? If you start working on the other two patterns. Now, you're right when majority of you said, it's easiest 
to work on patterns of action yes why because patterns of actions are observable we, we, we can actually see actions I mean we, we can measure actions but we can't do that with thoughts there is no thoughtometer available with us yet huh? but actions you don't need any meter it's just there now my question is if you change patterns of actions will it have a impact on patterns of emotions and eventually thoughts yes because everything in this universe is connected so you know what we'll do in the remaining time that we have why don't we then just super focus on patterns of actions that's it if we can do that it will have an impact on everything cool sounds good okay so chalo. before that I'm going to start asking you a few questions the questions are very simple hmm? the first question um, when do patterns start getting formed in your opinion in human beings now, of course you'll have lots of answers because we, 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 we have a psychotherapist out here so that person was like <laughs> okay uh, never mind let's let's hear it huh? so uh, huh? right from the time we are on okay but we'll be using some different uh, terminologies okay uh, so yeah okay hmm? before you're born well, what do you all say huh when when in the womb right okay well, you all agree or when do you think patterns get formed all of you say the same okay all right so I'm going to now differentiate between the two now these are very simple concepts by the way I'm, I'm sure all of you know it but I'm still going to differentiate okay one kind of pattern is an instinctive pattern instinctive okay and one of them are learned now what's an instinctive pattern any human being forget any human being any living thing has those patterns those are patterns which help you survive but those are the same patterns which help you learn so let's talk about a chota bacha, a child okay okay uh, we let's talk about a two three four month child okay we have a crawling child doesn't even walk okay that child for the first time in his life sees a light bulb or fire or something like that what do you think the child does crawls and just grabs the fire or grabs the bulb the moment he or she grabs the bulb what happens to the child it's hot what happens then? experience will get okay what happens starts crying <laughs> now the question is next time when the child sees the same light bulb or similar light bulb or fire what does the child do avoids it okay okay let's be honest there are some people Ah, which means there are some people okay how do they process information it happens okay so touching fire is uh, normally a scary experience right <laughs> okay so so we'll have to accept that most people will not touch the fire again and we also have to accept there are some people who need more than one experience right they do you don't believe me check it out there's something called as secondshadi.com <laughs> <laughs> now touching fire I understand that I just can't <laughs> that's like just too much okay but anyway he, he touches the second time but I'm just joking I huh? don't don't get senti about this <laughs> okay so let's say second time we touch Kalia third time I mean the possibility keeps going less now huh now let's say the same child uh, the child's mother with all the motherly love gives the child a chocolate a cookie huh and khata hai pehli bar maza aata hai next time when he eats the chocolate once again how will he feel nice okay so now the question is simple question can i say this becomes the starting point of a behavior it does right it's pretty obvious right behavior starting point of creating habits huh? so now the question is uh, why is it that the child doesn't touch fire and why is it or are the probability of the child touching the fire is very less and the probability of the child eating the chocolate is very high for the rest of his life right why does this happen what is the instinctive pattern that we have 
what is that thing that we are chasing all the time what is that thing that we are running away from all the time think about it pain and pleasure anything else reward and what else experience likes and dislikes you know what every word that has come out is right now let's make this even more simple how do you make it simple hey ishan bro where are the muckers oh there they are there they are sorry there they are okay abhi kaam karte hain let's look at this like dislike principle reward punishment principle experience stuff let's put this in a simple construct a very simple one ha huh? uske liye i'm going to ask you a couple of questions aapke hisab se nature has designed us in a particular form for what reason like like we human beings you and i we are like this we have two hands two legs eyes you know while a dog is slightly different or slightly or majorly different a mosquito is very different now we all are different 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 why uh, that design of us helps us do only one thing what is that survive that's all basically nature has developed you and i for only one purpose and that purpose is survival a mosquito is very differently designed but because that design helps the mosquito survive by the way who's more superior humans or mosquitoes <laughs> or humans or dogs come on come on. let's let's hear it here come on bata do ha huh? humans of course right as per whom as per whom <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so humans are superior as per humans. But if there was a conference of uh, mosquitoes, they would <laughs> they would think differently, right? Okay. Now, why do you think humans are superior? Ah, you have told me three, four things that we can do which mosquitoes can't. I'll tell you ten things mosquitoes can do which human beings can't. ऐसा भी तो होता है ना? Can you think of one or two things? Oh, malaria, mosquito उड़ सकता है. Uh, mosquito and suck your blood can you <laughs> oh i just let let's leave it there let's leave it there uh, the, the reality is uh, this is the re reason why i said this when everybody every living thing has been designed only for one purpose survival can we say that any living species is superior to the other it's not possible now if you look at the true books of science true now i'm not even talking about the ones that we probably read when we were in school you don't even hear or read rather the word superior versus inferior you can hear big small large but there is no now this slightly philosophical but i think i like it uh, think about it Now the fact that you realize that you are a human being like everybody else, and you are a living creature like every others, there's nobody on earth who's superior to you. How does that make you feel? Nice, nice? but the also realization that you're superior to nobody—that's <laughs> also fine, right? I mean, that's it because we are all created for only one purpose, and that is survival. Why? Because we play a role in the ecosystem. Fair enough. So now, when we are all designed only for survival. nature has given us instincts for survival now this word instinct is such a strong word it, it's like instinct wow but we'll dumb it down now if you dumb it down you realize instinct is nothing but actually a feeling right <laughs> which is a simple word so we'll use a simple word okay instincts are nothing but feelings now by sheer law of nature there's another law of nature everything in the universe works on a principle of duality a binary there are two sides there's good there's bad there's day there's night positive energy negative energy male female i mean just name it man it's it's everything if you look at it has this element of duality like matter anti matter right so if everything has these two elements even feelings will have to right right so now what are the two now let's dumb it down we have to say they are positive feelings and there are negative feelings and 
please anybody in neuroscience or psychology I know there is nothing called as negative feeling I know that also huh? fair enough but we are just trying to simplify it we can simply say that feelings that don't feel good feelings that feel good now in this room we are all multilingual people I'm, I'm sure we all are okay we all understand English for sure I'm sure we understand Hindi for sure and I'm sure we understand some other languages also now you take all the languages that we know in this room even then we cannot precisely we cannot precisely give words to all the shades because the shades are infinite right they're just infinite shades there are infinite shades of positive feelings there are infinite shades of negative feelings but if we have to just give it one word for the sake of convenience okay we can use any of the words that you used and it's okay it's just semantics you said pain pleasure my favorite person on earth Tony Robbins says the same thing <laughs> Uh, he says whatever we do in our life we do it to avoid pain or gain pleasure my few other favorites they don't use that word they use other words likes dislikes it's okay all right we can use any word but can we say this with conviction Let, let's go back to what you had said okay you had said pain pleasure can we just say that whatever we do in our life pleasure and pain we are trying to do this from the time we are born till the time we die and every second in between you and I are driven by these two twin forces whatever we do in our life we do it either to avoid pain or we're trying to do it to gain pleasure huh such a simple thing do you agree with that but why is that because this is an instinctive pattern and it has been created by nature not just for human beings it's actually been created for almost every living thing which moves a mosquito a cockroach a lizard they are all driven by these patterns these are instinctive patterns they help us do one thing survive now can you think of any exception even if you try to think it all goes back to this somehow or the other right fair enough now why is this true for that I'm going to talk a little bit I'm going to talk about the life work of a gentleman called Paul McLean so have you have you followed his work a lot of LND people follow his work Paul McLean uh, he came out with the three brain theory right what I want to do is I want to just talk about that for a few moments maybe five or ten minutes hmm? and then that will give us a lot of ammunition to talk about pattern building shall we do that hmm? and that will also explain why this will never why, why there will be no exception to this instant pattern so let's talk Paul McLean hmm? so Paul McLean um, well he came out with a simple hypothesis he said we have evolution as a theory which by the way he said should not be considered a theory he says there is enough evidence to call it a fact okay but chalo chhod dete hain let's still call it a theory 99 hmm? 98% people now believe that yes what darwin's had come out with was pretty much factual in fact we have the new age gurus called dawkins and all that who are militant you know they say you cannot call this a theory it has to be a pure fact okay but anyway um, we'll call it a theory now as per darwin's theory we are all um, homo sapiens right uh, what were we before that uh, yeah uh, yeah we were like uh, we can go on and on we were like we were like mammals uh, uh, before mammals we were we were reptiles before that we were amphibians perfect we, before that we were water creatures before that we were um, you know single cell organisms right like a like an amoeba huh? just because none of us have ever gone to anybody's house and we have never seen a photograph of an amoeba with a garland on it <laughs> doesn't mean they're not our ancestors but that's a good one right you can do that tonight huh? just take a printout of an amoeba usko par haar chala do, and if somebody asks you hai ye? you can say ye pardada hai hamara. <laughs> and I can say that with complete conviction ki hum log ek hi ke hai. On, on, no kidding seriously all of us in this room Hmm, I'm Eki Parivar and that too from Africa. Oh, do you all know that? It's a fact, yeah? Huh? We all, huh? 
वो क्या होता है ओके ओके एंड वी ऑल वी ऑल एमर्ज फ्रॉम वेयर विच पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड इट्स प्रूवन है फ्रॉम अफ्रीका राइट वेरी रिसेंटली आई सॉ दिस प्रेडी गुड डॉक्यूमेंट्री ऑन नेशनल जोग्राफिक द ग्रेट ह्यूमन ऑडिसी वॉट अ ब्यूटिफुल वन इट टॉक्स अबाउट हाउ you know we emerged from africa and we went to the other parts of the world amazing i highly recommend it go and see it but anyway coming back to paul mcclean he says let's examine how behavior started getting formed from the time when we were reptiles theek hai reptiles so bhai aur behno now a question to you when we were reptiles what was our profession i mean what did we do to remain alive played golf fight played golf <laughs> okay what 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 do you do what are the profession come on that time nobody work for reliance and <laughs> nobody work for tatas and uh, yeah z huh that's all right Uh, we were all hunters. That's all we were. Or कुछ नहीं कर रहे थे, हाँ? So now when we were hunters, ladies and gentlemen, we had to make one decision all the time. What's that decision? Exactly. I'll make it even more simpler. When we were reptiles, we looked at another reptile, and we had to make a quick decision. And the decision was, can I eat it? or will this eat me <laughs> seriously that's it that's all or all kuch nahi tha which remains even now <laughs> okay yeah fight or flight now tell me this decision we had to make in how much time ah, fraction and could we make a decision error If you made an error, that was your last decision. Hence, nature. You want to call God? Fine, call God. Okay, nature or God gave us a very simple brain. Very simple. Now, would you agree that simple means also more efficient? Simplicity brings in efficiency. Would you agree? होता है ना? Have you ever launched a very complicated dhasu scheme in the organization kya hua scheme ka <laughs> right i mean nobody could understand it but you thought it was a masterpiece but you know that's where it remained so simple is efficient that's a rule by the way that's one of the laws in innovation also by the way you know huh that's why apple became so famous and so good you know, it was simple to operate so come on nature also understood this hmm? nature that it's so simple so let's create a simple brain simple brain of course this is not the way the brain looked but i'm just <laughs> it's a representation whose only purpose was fight or flight now i'm making a disclaimer there was something more also huh fight flight freeze uh, mate you know all, all those things were there but i'm just for survival it was just this too right good and by doing this we survived we were living happily now why am i saying happily because see come on if that's not happiness i don't know what's happiness is uh, all we had to do was kill eat and and if you thought that okay i don't want to kill the animal you could always mate with it huh? <laughs> or uh, that's it so we were killing eating relaxing mating that's all now that's a good life man <laughs> now no, they, they can't be in complain of that life man huh? it was a good one but uh, like all good things it came to an end why did such a beautiful life come to an end they <laughs> they never thought it was beautiful but we think it's beautiful right but it had to come to an end why i'm almost feeling sad <laughs> why did it come to an end 
तो अच्छा तो चल रहा था एनी एनी गैसेज वेल वी इवॉल्ड वाट यू इवॉल्व बिकॉज वी वन फाइंड इवॉल्व और वी व फोर्स्ड टू इवॉल्व वी व फोर्स टू इवॉल्व वाई फोर्स टू इवॉल्व यू नो वॉट बाई दी वे एवोल्यूशन हैपन्स ओनली फॉर वन पर्पज सर्वाइवल राइट इन द कॉपरेट वर्ल्ड वी कॉल इट इनोवेशन सीरियसली इनोवेशन एवोल्यूशन आर द सेम एक्चुअली द सेम इफ यू डोंट इनोवेट यू डोंट सर्वाइव वॉट विल हैपन इफ एपल डिसाइड टिम कुक एंड कंपनी डिसाइड हे गाइज यू नो वॉट द आई फोन सेवन इज द अल्टीमेट फोन and it may be already be an ultimate phone and they realize ki bas yaar iske abhi kuch nahi karna okay let's let let's keep it this way it's just so awesome what will happen to it everybody will cook him everybody will cook him <laughs> in fact you know what uh, you will have oppo taking over <laughs> not that oppo is bad but <laughs> makes sense you will say i'll take an oppo man but i'll not take this phone that's it so we evolve because we to evolve we had no choice why we had no choice very simple man there were some reptiles which became bigger because they simply consumed a lot more and there were some reptiles which remained smaller now in your opinion why were the bigger ones or the smaller ones seriously why were the bigger ones or the smaller ones we were the tinier ones trust me you were the smaller ones and during those days they were like huge ones as compared to them we were like tiny ones okay and and that's a good thing for us if had we be, be you know what in, in nature the big ones die faster <laughs> seriously the, the tiny ones survive in fact there were some reptiles or or some living species at least who were there during the dinosaurs time who are there now and uh, even after we are gone i i i can say that with a lot of conviction they'll still be there can you tell me who are the ones cockroach turtles also not bad but cockroach definitely hmm? kya sahi hai yaar cockroach you know why cockroach al- uh, is is still alive and will continue to live because it's very adaptable hmm? so next time when you all see a cockroach don't scream ah huh? admire it <laughs> respect <laughs> respect man <laughs> i mean it have you ever heard a cockroach starving to death नहीं कुछ भी खा लेगा इट इट सोप इट विल सर्वाइव दैट्स कॉल एडेप्टेबिलिटी मैन वी ऑल शुड लर्न इन फैक्ट यू नो वॉट वेन वी रन इनोवेशन वर्कशॉप वी टेक द स्टोरी ऑफ द कॉकरोच पीपल थिंक इट्स पुकी इट्स नॉट इट्स ग्रेट यू शुड लर्न फ्रॉम इट दैट्स एडेप्टेबिलिटी बट एनी वे कमिंग बैक टू आर सिचुएशन वी वर द स्मॉल वंस एंड वी सर्वाइव बिकॉज वी एडेप्टेड यू नो वॉट वी डेड the bigger ones were killing the smaller ones but we found a way to survive you know how we did one thing adapting to the situation right sir how how did we adapt we went in a jhund oh give me five hum jhund we went into a jhund man you know what uh, we realized that the big guy is not eating me if i am in a gang you you see you see those discovery channels and all that and uh, animal planet you will see a, a, a lion he will kill you know what only that one buffalo trailing behind or is not a part of the is is not a part of the whatever the gang right it's it's different so we realize hey, 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 the big guy doesn't eat me if i'm with a gang so for mere survival we started creating a mahagadbandhan <laughs> by the way this mahagadbandhan is only for survival huh? <laughs> okay so uh, chalo ho gaya but we had to overcome a major panga if i may say to form this mahagadbandhan what is the panga we had to overcome a major challenge you right you right you right you right you right look at the brain it's so basic we have to overcome our basic urge you know what is the basic urge urge was very simple yeah i mean for me that urge was like 
I had to first overcome my urge of eating him. <laughs> I mean, see the temptation is like, wow, so yummy. It's like, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I had to overcome that urge. Plus, I had to overcome the fear that he'll eat me. Now, for me to overcome my fear that he won't eat me and, and, and overcome my urge that I want to eat him, something had to happen between us. Otherwise, we would have just killed each other. And what is that thing which had to happen between us? Some form of nah, communication. To bahut, that's also, yeah, yeah, trust. Some kind of emotion. I mean, we had to become senti about each other. If we didn't become senti about each other, we'll just kill each other. And you know, along with senti, we need something else. We also have to remember each other, no? Imagine what will happen, you become senti about people, but you don't remember them. Now that sounds awesome. Now that, that's a good life again. But not good for survival, right? So what? What we did is, we formed a new layer. I mean, nature gave us a new layer. And that helped us with emotions, plus memory. Right? Now by doing this, we survived. Good. But unfortunately, that wasn't the end of the situation. There were just too, far too many mammals that existed. And we were one of them. And there was no way we could have survived. Unless and until we had at least one differential advantage. Do you realize every species that has survived has one differential advantage over all other species? As an organization, your organization survives or thrives because your organization does one thing better than any other organization. If you don't have it, you can't survive. As a species, the same thing happens. But you know what? We are all sitting in this room, not afraid that anybody is going to kill us. At least no other animal will. <laughs> I mean, we are more clear that <laughs> if at all we get killed, we'll be killed by another human being, but not by an animal. Huh? Because we have that one different advantage. What is that? One. There's only one thing we can do better than other, human, uh, other animals. Think. 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 That's all. Now, if you go back to that documentary which I spoke about, there, yes, yes, yes. Uh, that's because we are able to innovate, think. Going back to that documentary which I was talking about, I don't know whether it's true or false, but that is a hypothesis. Human beings were going to become extinct till there was a defining moment. And the defining moment was, we learned how to make and control fire. Because we could make and control fire, we realized now no other species can kill me. Like if you are in the jungle guys, and if you have fire, you can be rest assured you are safe. Now smokers will be feeling very happy today. <laughs> you have a lighter, proper fire. But that's also not bad, at least have the, have the lighter at least, man. The shade comes and tick tick. <laughs> no. So, nature had to give us that one differential advantage. And that was the ability to think. And when I say think, it started with just little bit of logic, little bit of tooling. Then it went to great analysis. And then it went to words. Today, we are able to do all of that, you know, use analysis, uh, words, you know, it goes on and on. Now here is another spooky news. Every generation, every generation has a greater proportion of the new brain than the previous generation. Which means your kids are smarter than you. Okay? Which means you are way smarter than all the people in the past, even the ones whom you worship. That doesn't mean that you are wiser by the way. Huh? It simply means that our ability to use analysis is getting better and better and better. Whether that's bringing happiness, that's a big question mark. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's, maybe you're getting less wiser. Right? But now if you look at Paul McLean and if he says, if you take a human brain and cut it into two, uh, which is a small disc uh, disclaimer, please don't do that. Huh? <laughs> you will see that that's the way our brain evolved. 
I mean, he called it simply three major parts. He called this the RB, which stands for reptilian brain, the MB, mammalian brain or the limbic system, and the NC, which is the new brain. It is the neocortex, naya brain, right? Neocortex. Huh? Now, now let's take this forward, uh, ladies and gentlemen. In your opinion, among these three parts, which is the smartest part? Smartest of all? Neocortex. Would you all agree? Agree? Now I'm saying the smartest. A smart means simple, yeah, the part which can think, which can do analysis, right? It's the NC. Now the next one, which is the dumbest part? RV, because it can't do anything. Now I'm going to ask you a million dollar question. Uh, let's talk about today, not even some other day, okay? Uh, right now it's whatever, 4 something, 4.30 or whatever. Huh? Uh, uh, let's say in the morning when you woke up, I'm assuming that you all must have woken up at like 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, whatever it is. That means you've been awake for now 10 plus hours. Huh? In these last 10 hours that you've been awake, you have taken so many actions, haven't you? You can't even keep account of the actions that you've taken. There are just so many. It would be in thousands, easily. Now, among all those thousands of actions that you've taken, the question is, how much percentage of those actions, and I'm using the word percent, how much percentage of those actions were controlled by neocortex, the smartest part of the brain? Come on, let's have a percentage. 60, 70%? Come on, come on, let's hear it, let's hear it. Come on, let's have a buzz out here. 10%. Zero. Zero. Five percent. Ten. Thirty. What do you say, ma'am? Fifty. Sir. Eighty. Yavinabad. It's getting better now. <laughs> it's getting better. Yes, sir. Hundred? Hundred okay? Okay. So in this room, we have a small variation. It goes from 0 to 100. <laughs> Nothing major. Okay. But now you all want the answer, right? Of course you want the answer. So I'll give it to you. Okay. The answer is your neocortex, the only part of the brain which can think, by the way, has controlled a whopping anda. Zero. Now you must be feeling, nah, 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 nah. This, is, this is too much man, come on man, what are you, you don't know me man, you know, I, I'm an educated guy, come on, I've achieved a lot in life, how can you say that uh, my reptilian brain is controlling my actions? Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, before you feel bad about it, uh, you should actually um, thank nature. You know why? It's good for you. Do you remember why we have been made, what the, the purpose of our design is what? survival and for our survival this was important why is that look at it let's imagine you're in the jungle and a lion comes in front of you what do you end up doing you'll run right excellent that's good for your survival imagine for a moment if it was not your reptilian brain but it was your neocortex in full bloom what would have happened? You would be into analysis mode. <laughs> yes, and no, no, analysis could be uh, Siberian AK Live. Usko bhook lagi hai? Male hai, female hai, uska jhund ke hai? Man, you would be in. <coughs> oh, nowadays a selfie wala. Oi! Man, you would be in analysis mode and that would be the final analysis of your life. Okay, now, now, now. You'll be saying, Swamit, ya, jungle ki baat karna band kar. I live in Mumbai, which is a corp, I mean, which is a concrete jungle. Huh? Idhar ki baat kar. Fine, we'll talk about this jungle. Let's say, 
you put your hand on a hot stove accidentally what do you end up doing remove you remove it quickly in a split second why because of the rb and by the way rb is a misnomer it's not even your brain it's actually your central nervous system it's not even called the rb by the way that is only paul mclean who called it the rb it's actually your brain stem which is not even your brain it's actually your body it goes from here to here and don't forget the nerves they are also a part of the central nervous system which means your full body so the moment you touch the hot stove tang for your survival your body just acts imagine if it was nc it would be crazy man you would be analyzing the temperature you would think are meri ring gayi wo to wedding thing wedding ring thi koi baat nahi mummy ki nahi gayi ha yo absolutely it's it's reflex and all for our survival now i will make you feel even more better not i i mean nature will feel make you better make you feel better now you will be thinking but neocortex ka kya don't worry neocortex played a very important role the fact that you're sitting in this room working in these awesome organizations creating good companies it all happened because of your neocortex only baba neocortex how neocortex plays a 100% influencing role while reptilian brain has 100% control <laughs> what what do i mean by that look at this your neocortex does one thing what is that thinks every thought leads to come on repetition of what we just discussed um emotions well there is one step before that uh, your thinking actually leads to activation of memories memories now your mind is filled and by the way it's not even this much it's just only chota hippocampus there is this hippocampi rather okay they are slightly bigger than almonds hmm? and that's it it's 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 so small but it has your entire memory man it's a memory bank hey you know what that part of the brain which of course i'm not representing it that way is filled is filled with all memories of your life and every memory by default is either a green memory or a red memory any memory which has some shade of pain or some shade of ple pleasure now you could have dark green memories or light green memories dark red light red your best friend is your dark green your favorite food is your dark green your child is super dark green your wife husband i don't know whatever it is ha huh? uh, si <laughs> oh no oh, the, don't, don't record this ha huh? <laughs> okay uh, when your husband was not your husband was a green one right ha huh? said so it, it all level anyway we're just joking ha huh? um, for me it's been 13 years man oof <laughs> anyway so now how does it really work let's look at this i'll give you a quick 2 minute and then we'll get into how we can use this for our life okay would you like to explain the circuitry as a psychotherapist no i shall cut it okay we'll we'll do that but it's very simple now i i'm going to use computer terminology is that okay because we all are so used to it we have a ram like a phone has a ram right um your ram is um, in your phone is like 2 gb 3 gb whatever huh like this our brain also has a ram our ram doesn't look like this but it's actually called the pfc prefrontal cortex okay that's your ram simple ram forget pfc now it's a very small space tiny space now the moment you see the lion what happens a memory gets activated now tell me lion is what kind of memory uh, so green red dark red okay it got activated 
but hey I'm a little confused now let me ask you why I can say this with complete conviction that nobody in this room <laughs> has been eaten by a lion <laughs> ah iska matlab hai experience doesn't mean something which has happened to you experience can also mean anything which you have seen heard in fact the brain is so awesome or dumb whichever you want to look at it that our brain cannot make out the difference between anything that we have vividly imagined versus what has actually happened so like if you deeply deeply imagine that last evening you had dinner with elvis presley it becomes reality for you so seriously it becomes reality for you if somebody says kya baat kar rahe ho mar gaya pagal hai main kal tha uske sath it happens that way and it's so that you're lying because in your brain it's really happened because you imagined it you know visualization aise to hota hai just keep all of it ho gaya so now what's happened the memory of the lion got activated because that little area called pfc or ram activated it now here's the funny part when i say green or red when i say green or red it's pain or pleasure fine but every memory has a emotional charge now what's a emotional charge a emotional charge is whenever you activate any memory you actually release fuel in your body and it's not hypothetical fuel it's real fuel sachi much ka fuel now the red is different kind of a fuel the green is a different kind of a fuel now i will not take the name of those fuels because it's a big list huge list and you know what every passing day we are discovering new uh, some time ago it was a list of 116 uh, then it went to 500 <laughs> it's just going on and on because you know what we are looking at those fuels and we are actually further synthesizing them i'll just give you a example of couple of fuels cortisol is a fuel by the way you have heard about cortisol right cortisol is the stress hormone but you know what why are we calling it just a peptide or a hormone it's actually fuel when it gets released into your body through the entire circuitry of insula pituitary glands it's 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 like a machine yeah when it gets released it's giving you a signal that you run away from this thing and your reptilian brain which is the action center just runs away from it you know why because it receives real fuel you see your child or your best friend what gets activated a green memory green memory means with that memory you got fuel and here i can take names of the fuels if it's a child then it's oxytocin bonding wala if it's i mean it's, it's many fuels are there yaar endorphins are you know you know we think endorphin is like one thing it's not one thing endorphin is a collection of many 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 peptides put together which is called oh endorphins serotonin these all real fuels it's telling you go towards this red fuels are telling you go away from it green fuels are telling you go towards it and reptilian brain is just a machine why is it a machine simple what's the characteristic of a machine machine cannot think yes machine cannot think machine doesn't have any understanding of future or past machine doesn't know what is right or wrong machine only works on fuel fair enough isn't that exactly what rb is usko kuch nahi pata sahi galat kya hai usko present future or past ka kuch pata nahi acha bura pata nahi just acts on fuel and depending on what kind of fuel agar ye fuel aa gaya to it will run away from that memory or that stimulus agar ye fuel aa gaya green wala fuel aa gaya so it will go towards it that's the way 
our machine works. Did you get it? So every action happens because of this sequence. You see something, it gets into your RAM PFC. Right? Once it gets into your RAM, that memory, it's either green or red. If it's red, red fuels will get activated. If it's green, green fuels will get activated. And those fuels are actual fuels for the RB to either go towards them or run away from them. Got it? That's how it works. And this is how it works for every action that we take throughout the day. Simple actions. Um, filing income tax returns, uh, getting up in the morning and going to the gym. Uh, uh, you know all these actions that we want to do but we are not able to do. It happens like this only. Uh, shall we take a simple example of uh, any action that you want to do but you are not able to do? Come, can you give me some examples? Huh? Is the best? Aisa hota hai? I mean, but I thought people who want to go to the gym, they just go. Aisa nahi hota? Nahi? Thoda resistance hota hai? Okay. So, chal ek. There's always tomorrow? Oh. I thought I was the only one but I come with everybody? Not bad. I'm feeling at home now. Now I'm feeling, we are friends now. <laughs> Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, let me okay, use that. Then let me go here. And let me do this very quickly. So tell me, when you plan the chalo, kal to mein gym mein. Hmm? What do you end up doing? You, you plan, hmm? you put an alarm, right? Kitne uh, alarm dalte ho? Come on guys, open up here, it's simple. Hai. Uh, 5.30, huh? depending on what time you have to leave your home, right? So let's say you put an alarm of 5.30. Because you have to leave your home at what time? No, 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 for, for office? 9. <laughs> uh, chalo, yaar, let's do normal, 8.30, 8. Or 8, 8 o'clock, okay? Uh, 8, karte hai, okay? So chalo, very good. A, you put an alarm of 5.30, uh, next day in the morning it's 5.30 and the alarm rings and the moment the alarm rings, uh, pretty obvious right, you wake up in the morning, uh, you wake up and you put your jogging shoes on and you start jogging, am I right? No? Fear karte ho? Oh, 50, oh, snooze, snooze, right, okay, so 5.40 ho gaya, 5.50 ho gaya, 6 o'clock kya kya karte hai? Dismiss. Hi. Okay. Now let's say in extreme cases, it is 7.30. Now you are in the middle of, by the way, have you realized uh, morning, the dreams are very sweet. You realize it now? Uh, do you have any idea why? Because I don't know, I, I, haven't, I haven't studied that. But, and they keep getting sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. Okay, like... Um, at 5.30, you are having a guftagu with Sunny Diol. By the time it's 7 o'clock, the Sunny changes. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding, man. All right. But you have 7.30. Remember, you have to leave at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, actually 8 o'clock. This time, there is no alarm. But suddenly, and 8 o'clock you just get up and you see the alarm and your eyes pop out and then how do you get ready? At what pace? Supersonic pace, right? I mean, you do things at such a fast pace. What used to take 10 minutes now takes 2 minutes. And you leave your home. Well, at 8 o'clock, just in time, right? Or as now you will say, somehow in time. It's just somehow in time. Now let's see what happens. Very simple. You got three parts of the brain. R, B, M, B and N, C. Now ladies and gentlemen, tell me, N, C, the smartest part of the brain which understands everything. What do you think it wanted to do? Throughout. I mean, it's that part of the brain which knows how to solve every problem India has, 
that part of the brain which knows what's right, what's wrong, everything, it knows everything. What do you think it wanted to do at 6 o'clock or, or at 5.30? Get up. It always wanted to get up. It had no problem. It had no knowledge issue. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Always wanted to get up. But who's the boss? Why is RB the boss? Yes. RB controls. RB has all the powers of action. So what happened? Dumb. Hai. Now I'm not saying that's the characteristic of a boss, by the way. <laughs> okay. But hey, now it's got all the powers. So what did RB want to do? No, 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 no. But here, yes. Now tell me. We have just discussed it right now. How come RB acted so differently? At 7:30. But how does RB know survival time? Hai? RB ko kuch nahi pata. RB doesn't know anything. Yeah, RB is a machine. How did it know it's survival? Condition. Answer is here. Memory. Abhi toh humne baat kiya. RB works on what? Fuel. The what got activated? Some fuel, no? RB received some fuel. What was the fuel? The fuel was some memory here. Huh? Now the memory could be boss ki memory. Huh? You suddenly remembered ki are boss is looking at you saying I say late. <laughs> or some client meeting, or I don't know what it was, yeah. Right? Or traffic time. Meri shuttle me so jayegi. Right? And the moment that memory got activated, which kind of fuel got activated, guys? Those, those fuels which take you away from it. That means, you know what? Mujhe, mein so tha. Memory got activated. Of my boss looking at me saying, so much late again. Right? It's a red fuel. Now, what does... What gets released in my head? A fuel to go away from that experience. And I get into action. Got it? Agar, there are some people who without any problem wake up at 5.30. What happens in their head? You crack this, you crack everything. Tell me. There are some people in this room, and I'm, I can say this with complete conviction, who wake up without an alarm, and they go out and exercise. They go for a jog. You're right. What fuel is getting released? The green fuel. That means they are waking up at 5.30, and I don't know what they are doing. They are doing something pretty exciting. Uh, I mean, I, I can give you a very simple tool. Let's say all of us decide that tomorrow morning we will all meet out here at 5 o'clock or 4.30 in the morning. How many of you will come? Picnic. No, no, I'm talking about gym. Okay, jogging. All of us guys, tomorrow morning at uh, 4.30, we will all meet at this Hayatka gate. Hmm? Now, how many of the people will actually come? You will come. Okay. I didn't finish the full story. I was going to tell you that there is somebody who's going to join us, who's going to teach us how to jog. Now you can fill in the blank. Whom do you want? Sunny. Sunny. Okay. So we are having Sunny coming tomorrow, and um, Sunny is going to teach us how to jog. Now how many of you will come? Sunny. Sunny will not do it for you. <laughs> Achha. 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 I was not going to say Sunny the old man. <laughs> Okay, Sunny Leone will come. Okay? I'll come. I don't know about you. For me, I'll come at three, man. <laughs> but it all depends on what is the memory of Sunny in your head. <laughs> okay. Now, you want somebody else? Who? <coughs> Salman. Oh, Salu. <laughs> will you come then? Oh, you will come? All right. Hey, to mazak kar rahe hai. Hey, to mazak nahi hai. Actually, kar bhi sakte hai. <laughs> but you got the point? It's all about fueling. That's all it is. 
So what should we be then focusing on? If you want to start building patterns, we just have to talk about fueling. In fact, you know, this entire talk should be renamed. And the entire talk should be fuel it. <laughs> you want to take some action? You're not able to do it? Just fuel it. What I'm going to do is, I've done a lot of talking. I'll now get you guys to talk a little bit. For the next three minutes, let's try to answer simply these three questions. Simple three questions. Okay? If we can answer these three questions, ladies and gentlemen, we can take the giant leap and we can start learning ways in which we can fuel any action in our life. Okay? So the first question is, we have a binary. What's a binary? Well, we just spoke about it. Anything that we do in our life, we do it to avoid pain or gain pleasure. That's a binary, right? Now that is a law. Can we change it? No, we can't change it. Right? Like human beings, we could not wish away fire. But what we did? We utilized fire. So now this is a law. Whatever we do in our life, we do it to avoid pain or gain pleasure. Now the question is, how can we use it for our benefit? Got it? Huh? The second question is, all the actions that we take, we take it on the basis of what? Emotions, logic, or a combination of both. And of course, which of them are more important. And the last one, the reason why we are sitting in this room is to understand how we can create real behavior change by really fueling. So if you want to really fuel or if you want to create a real pattern, which part of the brain do we need to work on? Shall we work on NC, MB, or RB? So can I make a suggestion? Hmm? You all are sitting in the tables. And some tables are big, some tables are small. Can you all get into a small discussion? And on the basis of whatever we've done in this last 40, 45 minutes, huh? can you try to answer these three questions? And then we'll bring it out in the open. Shall we do that? Huh? So, shall we, over to you. Let's take around four odd minutes to answer these three questions in your little gang. It was fun observing yeah. you guys and it was fun observing you guys also. <laughs> okay, Chalo, let's, let's resume. I'll tell you what, if we answer these three questions, hmm, the rest of it is going to be makhan. It's going to be smooth. Very smooth. Why? Chalo. The first question, you and I cannot change the laws of the universe. How? Why? We can't. Because you and I are a part of the universe. So let's accept the laws. This instinctive pattern can never be changed. It's true for 7.2 billion people on earth. But we can always use it, no? So how use it? How do we use this law? Let's open up. How do we use it? Accept it. Accept it. What do we do that okay, we coexist. Okay. 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 Anything from you guys? Hey, anything from you guys? Okay. It's very simple actually. Socho. Reptilian brain works on only one principle. What is that? Okay. What is a reptilian brain? Let's go back to it. What is a reptilian brain? It's just a machine. Fair enough? I, we've already elaborated on it. It's got all the characteristics of a machine. It's just that it's a part of us and hence we find it very difficult to believe that we have actually something which is just a machine. And it needs fuel. So if you want to do something and you're not able to do it, you don't have fuel for that activity. Make sense? I'll give you a metaphor. You wake up in the morning and you want to drive your car which you haven't touched for the last one month. Okay? 
and then you suddenly realize man all the fuel has dried up it happens by the way if you keep a car stagnant for a long day and you realize everything is fine in the car but just that there is no fuel there is no petrol or there is no diesel whatever it is do you end up taking depression pills for it no. what do you end up doing you take a simple you fuel it and you right can you fool the car can you tell the car are car chalna yaar baad mein bhar dunga yaar kar sakte ho nahi because ek machine hai you cannot fool it chalana hai usko fuel do same goes with reptilian brain you can't fuel you can't fool it you can fuel it so if you want to do something and you're not able to do why don't i introduce a better way of talking to yourself instead of saying i am not able to do it simply end up saying are i am not able to go to the gym or i am not able to send that report or i am not able to do my phd simply because us activity ke liye rb ke paas fuel hi nahi hai i will be saying so math am i not struggling responsibility no 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 you not struggling responsibility in fact it's good fueling your car is your responsibility so is fueling your rb but it gives you a better way of thinking because it gives you solution you separate your brain from yourself you separate the machine from yourself and then you say okay now how do i uh, operate this machine simple it gives you it gives you an answer and the answer is second question what is the fuel for the rb emotions logic which are the fuels second answer is memories are nothing but emotions if you look at it because every memory has an emotional charge so in fact all the actions that we take all means all without any exception have emotions why is that emotions are fuel so look at this if there is some action that means there was some emotion and now don't take emotion as senti senti emotion you're sitting out here you had a glass of water why you know because you're feeling uncomfortable that's also an emotion and all you wanted to do was feel comfortable and you just had that water period that's how it works right so all our actions have emotions no action or rather no emotion no action no emotion means no fuel now can you have any action on the basis of pure logic possible hi nahi hai possible kyun nahi hai it's very simple there is no direct connection between these two fair enough but is it possible that a particular action has emotion also and logic also it's of course possible now which of those actions are good which have both obviously like in that entire saga the 730 action had both what the rb was doing and what the nc wanted was completely aligned make sense now we go to the last question you and i are here to understand how to build new patterns um so which part of the brain do i need to work on mb rb nc mb why is it mb it's very simple nc us pe kaam karne ki zarurat hi nahi hai cuz nc knows already everything rb usko kaam hi nahi kar sakte why it's a machine what's left mb that is where the entire programming of life happens so so here's a better way of looking at it it's a slightly poetic way of looking at it all my current actions and patterns are because of my memories because my memories also fuel all my current actions are because of my past now i want to create new actions and hence i need to give myself a new past can i give myself a new past yes you can and that's the golden grail of behavior change why look at this this is so poetic okay why i can create a new past because my future one moment from now is going to be my past forever if i can just design that one moment in a nice way make it pleasurable next time i have massive fuel for that action it gives me a new direction make sense that's all it is it's all about fueling it 
Cool? Understood? Got it? So now why don't we do one thing? Isko apply karte. Let's apply this, whatever we discussed in the last one hour, or, or a little bit more than that, let's apply it in our life. Huh? Let's do two things. I'll give you a simple, very simple model of categorizing actions so that you know which actions are good, which actions are not good, which actions have fuel, which actions have, don't have fuel. And then I'm going to introduce how we at Forum for the last so many years have been taking a part of this and we've been helping people sustain it. And I'll tell you how I've been doing it with even cancer patients or HIV people or whatever to create a real behavior change. And remember in those areas, behavior change has to be real. In the corporate world, there is no like straightforward death in front of you so you know we can delay. But there, there is no question of delaying. And, and so, so I'm going to keep it simple. Hmm? So I guess we've got around 40, 45 minutes and all. Huh? Is that okay if we extend by 10, 15 minutes? Is that okay? All of you? Chalega na? Thoda chalega na? Okay, then, then, then I'll, go at a, I'll go at a reasonable pace then. So what we'll do is, first the model, around 20 minutes, and then 20 minutes of how you, you and I, right now itself, can start applying it. Okay, sounds good? So first the model. Simple, super simple. A 14 year old person sitting in this room could have understood it. A illiterate person could have understood it. At the same time, a CEO of a multi-million dollar company can utilize it to create change in his or her life or maybe in the organization. Okay, this is simple. Let me just give it to you. Uh, some of you might have seen this before. In fact, you have seen it before. Uh, now, let's take all the actions that we take in our life, all the actions. Hmm? And we can simply categorize those actions in four quadrants on the basis of two parameters. Now, what are the two parameters? Very simple. The first parameter is, is that action a good action or a bad action? Now, what is good or bad? It depends on only one factor. Is the NC supporting it or NC not supporting it? Make sense? Trust your NC. NC knows everything. Okay? But we're not taking any morality into the picture. Like if your goal is to kill a thousand people and your NC agrees, that's good for you. Because those thousand people could be bad people or whatever it is. Your NC knows it. Alright? So now let's figure out what is a good action, what's a bad action for NC. It depends on your goals because NC knows your goals. Let's say your goal is you want to have six packs. Good health. In that case, if you jog, can I say jogging is a good action or a bad action? Because NC is supporting it. NC knows that jogging will give us those six packs. Eating a rich, yummy, delicious chocolate cake, good action or a bad action? Bad, because NC knows this is going to take you away from the goals. But that's because your goal was six packs. Now let's say we change the goal and your goal is by 1st June, you want to be 300 kgs in weight. Why? It could be because you're in love with a Japanese lady who loves sumo wrestlers. She finds them pretty hot. That's not the end of the story. She's a multi, multi, multi billionaire. And that's not the best part of the story. The best part of the story, she's also very, 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 very old. <laughs> okay? Now I was just kidding, okay? But if you know such a lady, please let me know. <laughs> now, in such a case, that's your goal, huh? That you want to be 300 kgs in weight. And jogging, good action or bad action? Terrible action. Because your goal is to, 300, to have 300 kgs, right? Huh? Terrible action. Every step will cost you a million dollars. But eating that yummy, delicious chocolate cake. Good action or bad action? Great action. That should be your staple diet. <laughs> Make sense? It all depends on what? NC. Forget goal. NC. 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 Case up say good hai, to good hai. And says the bad hai, the bad hai. Just trust your NC. It makes it very simple. The second parameter is pain pleasure. We have already discussed kya hai pain pleasure. So no point discussing it. The only thing I can talk about pain pleasure is pain pleasure can never be a straight line. Pain pleasure necessarily has to be a circle. Okay, infinite shades of pain, infinite shades of pleasure. The more we move away from pain, we get into pleasure. The more we move away from pleasure, we get into pain. So in a way, both of them are acting at the same time. Make sense? 
but for the sake of simplicity we have put it in a straight line and if we just do this now look at it we can have all the actions that you have taken in your life put in four quadrants now let's look at the first quadrant what is that category all the actions which are painful and bad quadrant 2 all the actions which are pleasurable and bad quadrant 3 all the actions which are painful and good quadrant 4 pleasurable and good among these four quadrants there is only one category of actions in which there is an alignment between what the NC wants to do and what the RB is doing which is that quadrant four all the other quadrants there is a misalignment all the other quadrants are not good quadrants in terms of effectiveness that's not what is taking people in the top four person it's only quadrant four which is taking people in the top four person right now let's see what's happening in quadrant two in quadrant two NC is saying don't do but RB is doing you know why because RB is going berserk because it has a lot of fuel for that action can you give me examples of quadrant 2 smoking. smoking will be like NC bol raha hai mat kar lekin kya kare fuel hai us action ke liye um, binge eating eating the delicious chocolate cake you know all of that in the corporate world there are so many quadrant 2's let me give you one famous quadrant 2 in the corporate world a boss is sitting not knowing what to do suddenly sees his team members and says chalo aaj meeting ke liye that's a quadrant 2 yeah because it gives you a sense of control hey chal aaja meeting le aajao but meetings are the number one killers of productivity in the corporate world i, I know we all experience it right fine that's quadrant 2 cool quadrant 3 mein kya ho raha hai jogging okay jogging and all that or 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 writing that report in fact your corporate world is filled with quadrant 3s by the way learning and development development professionals after every training program people write down goals how many of them follow those goals there's a real research on this yaar we have actual data on this okay uh, especially e learning courses the statistics of e learning courses are that 5% people finish the course okay now of the people who have finished the course 13% people take some action that means you are now shrinking it to how much hardly less than 1% having made any serious behavior change or any behavior change make sense now when you write a goal and you don't follow up or you don't take action that is what category of action quadrant 3 like jogging is quadrant 3 writing that report is quadrant 3 applying for your phd is quadrant 3 or, or or doing real work on the phd is quadrant 3 why is it quadrant 3 your nc wants to do it with all good intentions but you're not doing it why now let's talk the brain language we've spent good one and a half hours on the brain a brain bolo what's happening you should not say i am not doing it when i said you should have caught me and said so how are you saying that your language should be is activity ke liye for this activity there is no fuel available it takes away the pressure from you that's all it is nc wants to do it but rb is not doing it how will rb do it rb is a machine yeah don't blame the rb here it's like blaming the car for not moving when there is no petrol you can't rb is one no fuel you have to fuel it that's it what is quadrant 4 where rb is fueled and nc is also very happy can you give me examples of quadrant 4 motivation the motivation is a very broad term uh, action concept okay any other actions like an athlete uh, he has a goal to compete and uh, he practices he practices he practices he burns a sweat and then he is able to achieve excellent that is quadrant 4 any other examples of quadrant 4 you can give me life examples yeah Athlete, huh? 
exactly a musician performing that's cotton four in your life it your, your life is filled with cotton fours guys examples of life examples though yeah like me spending time with my kid spending time with kid uh, spending time with um, friends spending time with um, okay I, i i don't know whether i should say husband or wife i don't know uh, yeah watching movies hey, but let me stick to that uh, spending time with wife would be quadrant for the guys i'm asking and the husband quadrant four spending time with husband would be oh yeah yeah <laughs> okay see uh, good good very good so spending time with your wife or husband when that person was not your wife or husband clearly that time it was quadrant four after 10 years the tendency is quadrant three yeah um can spending your sp spending time with your wife or husband be quadrant two ever <laughs> cannot no no i mean spending time with somebody else's wife could be quadrant two <laughs> and getting caught would be quadrant one <laughs> okay just kidding yeah okay just, just these are fun examples uh, make sense guys huh? so you understood quadrant two you understood quadrant three you understood quadrant four why don't we even go to quadrant one What's happening in quadrant one, guys? What's quadrant one? But it is NC is still saying you should. Somebody else taking action on you cannot be a part of this model. Cannot be a part of this model. That happened to you. You didn't do it. anger anger is not an action but you are absolutely right whenever you do anything in a state of negative emotions and again repeating psychologists there's nothing called you know i know that but just for the sake of it negative emotion means anything which doesn't feel good fair enough okay now let's talk about anger just anger for the sake of convenience do you all get angry with anybody ata ab gusa kis pe let's just, let's stick to another corporate world let's not go to the uh, at at work whom do you get angry with subordinate okay why you get angry with your subordinate chalo he didn't do it why you getting angry timeline get got messed up why you getting angry he didn't do everything gets messed up why you getting angry all expectations gone hey why why you getting angry work has not got complete why you getting angry think about it what does it lead to if you don't finish your work ultimately what will happen Exactly, and he has not become like you. Why are you getting angry? Because your performance has gone absolutely in khada. It leads to what? Your survival, guys. Guys, I, I, I'm going to do this very quickly. Okay, and please bear with me if we go a little bit extra time, just a little bit. We will not to go too much, but I want to do this very, very quickly. See, what is quadrant one? You know, quadrant one is very simple. Whenever you are experiencing. any form of painful emotion it could be anger frustration disgust irritation um, anxiety all these are either fight or flight see when we uh, evolved fight flight evolved like this it became a spectrum of emotions right now if you look at anger it is basically nothing but a deeper primal emotion it's a primal emotion there's only one primal emotion and and all of this is shades of the primal emotion and that helps us survive can you tell me what is that primal emotion it's only one it's a four letter word starting with f fear fear good <laughs> that's all so when you are angry It's actually fear. Higher the anger, greater is the fear. And fear is important for your survival. If you had no fear, you know what would happen? You would have survived. Imagine if you had no fear. You would right now go in the middle of the road. You would see a truck approaching, and you would wonder, "Iske kitne tukde honge?" Make sense? Now. whenever you engage 
in that situation where there's a lot of fear for your survival, which part of the brain is going to take over? When RB takes over, what will happen to NC? It will shut down. So it is said RB is inversely proportional to NC. Make sense? So whenever you are in a state of deep anger, disgust, frustration, irritation, NC just shuts down. That is the time when you are in quadrant one. Got it? Now I am going to zip, take, the, take you through this very quickly because I don't want to spend much time on quadrant one today. I don't want to spend time on quadrant two also. I want to spend time only in quadrant three and that's where the real changes. Uh, quadrant one is simply called the quadrant of decay. It's decay when you are operating in that situation where you are in a state of fight or flight and your NC shuts down, you are killing yourself. Would you agree? Yes. And I'm not talking about hypothetical killing. It's real. You'll know it, right? When you are in a state of anger, frustration, disgust, you are releasing all the cortisols and norepinephrine, and you all know what happens to your body when all that gets released. Um, according to one research, when we die, our dead body has a massive amount of norepinephrine. You know why? So that our body can decay. All those peptides, huh? one of them, cortisol also you can say, it's just filled. Our body is just filled at the time of death so that we can decay, our body can decay. That same chemical or set of chemicals get released every time you are angry, frustrated, disgusted. That means you are killing yourself. So next time when you have somebody shouting and screaming at you, what should you feel? Hoi <laughs> marra now, I'm pausing here. The only solution for getting rid of quadrant one is having higher emotional resilience, which is not what we are doing this. Maybe in the next learning session, we can do that. <laughs> okay? So that's quadrant one. Bad news is it will remain. Good news is we can reduce it if we increase our ER. Fine? Quadrant two is the quadrant of distraction. We don't want to spend time on that. You know why? It's there. But you need to know why it's there. Why would anybody go to quadrant 2 in the first place? There's only one reason. It gives you instant pleasure. Why would you need instant pleasure? Because that time you're in a form of some kind of pain. The pain can be anything. Boredom, anxiety, it can be anything. Even desire is pain by the way. Desire is massive pain, you know that? Like let's say somebody likes to booze a lot and you tell him, hey buddy, I have a party today at 8 o'clock and I have some black label with me. Uska pura din kharab jayega. Because he's desiring it. <laughs> okay? So what is quadrant 2? It is giving you that instant pleasure. Now you can get, you can get pleasure from two quadrants. Which are those two quadrants? Quadrant? 2 and 4. You know who goes to quadrant 4? I'll tell you, who goes to quadrant 4? The one who has quadrant 4. <laughs> the one who has quadrant 4. If you don't have quadrant 4, you can't go to quadrant 4. So the best antidote of quadrant 2 is simply have quadrant 4. There are two antidotes of quadrant 2. One is develop quadrant 4s or simply get into therapy. Fair enough? I'll give you an example. It's 10 o'clock at night, sorry, it's 8 o'clock at night, you had proper dinner. Proper full flesh, no compromised dinner, sahi. And it's a Saturday night, you're not gone out partying, you're just at home. It's 10 o'clock, you're not feeling sleepy. And you're getting bored. What do you end up doing? Apart from that, is there a possibility you'll go to the refrigerator and realize that, hey, there's some pastry kept and munch it. But on the other hand, if you are engaged in some very creative activity at that time, would you have eaten it? No. Because you don't need it. You get into quadrant 2 because you are in some kind of pain. Of course, if it's an addiction like smoking and all that, you have to get into therapy. So, you are getting into that. Make sense? That's quadrant 2. The best antidote of quadrant 2 for us would be what? Simply end up developing quadrant 4s. And that development can happen only if you start taking quadrant 3s and put them into quadrant 4s. Okay? 
Now quadrant 3 is very simple. It's an activity which is good but it does not have fuel. Now how do you fuel? There are only three ways to fuel any activity. This is the crux, ladies and gentlemen, the crux. What are those three ways? The first one, you have to realize you want to do something but you are not doing it. Is there a possibility that there is anti-fuel, there is a red dot attached to it? Possible? It is possible. Let's say you want to go to the gym and you are not able to go. Why is that? Simply because you not only have any green, you don't have any green fuel but you have a lot of red fuel. Now how did that happen? It happened because of anchoring. Like a child touched the fire, fire got anchored as pain. You have probably anchored that activity as pain. Now I'll speak from a guy's perspective. Let's say one fine day you decided to go to the gym. Yeah. And you woke up at 5 o'clock. You killed yourself. Was that painful? Anchoring ho gaya. It's become a red dot. Then you drove all the way to the gym. You don't like driving. Red has become redder. Then you got into the gym after changing and all of that. And you went inside the arena. It's a car after all. And you looked all around and you saw all other guys in the gym. Massively buffed up with muscles. Was that painful? Now the red has become redder. And then you look at yourself and you realize even you are buffed up just at the wrong place. The red is getting more and more and more red. Man, this is the way anchoring happens. And then of course I can keep adding one big guy comes and gives you dumbbells and teaches you how to count. It's, it's crazy. I mean you are starting, in fact a lot of quadrant threes are having red dots with them. So what do you do? You have to give green dots. You have to give fuel. There is already that negative fuel which is making you go away. You need better fuel which will take you towards them. Three ways to do it. Number one, the same way the way red happened, you can make a green by anchoring. Now what is anchoring? Of course you all know anchoring but I will still give it to you in, a, in the simplest possible way. There are already a lot of greens in your head, in your hippocampus. There are a lot of, lot of greens. That means activities which give you those Fuels, by the way, they are real fuels, repeating for emphasis for the third time, they are real fuels, they are not hypothetical fuels, huh? real fuels. So it's already there. Can you attach the activity which you want to do with that green fuel? Example very simple, you love dancing, no, yeah, yeah. go to the gym, don't go to the Akhara section, go to the Zumba class. What have you done? The green that you have for dancing, now you are attaching it to the gym. It's anchoring. Okay, uh, you, you love your friend, you take your friend along to the gym, the, the love of your friend gets transferred to the gym. <laughs> I'm not kidding man, I mean this sounds so, so much like a joke but it's, it's a fact. Uh, let's say you're in love with a Malaysian girl, you start liking Malaysia man. <laughs> you, 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 you experience it? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> it's a fact, that's how anchoring happens, it, it just happens. So the idea is, Fuel it by using some existing fuel for some other activity. That's the number one. Number two, it's very simple. Look at all the existing fuels. Can some of those actions give you the results? Like for example, going to the gym is not your goal. Good health is your goal. In my case, it's very simple. I don't go to the gym, but I love playing badminton. You know why? Because that's the time when I meet my buddies. That's the time when we all have a lot of fun. Ha ha he he. We have, we don't play well, but we have crazy contests and you know all those kind of stuff. For me, badminton is massive fuel. When I'm, I'm from Pune, at 7.30 if I'm in Pune and I'm doing nothing else, you'll feel me about badminton court. You know why? Because there's a WhatsApp group which says, hey guys, we're meeting today and I go like a child. Why? Because there's so much fuel. Make sense? So two ways, anchor or choose an alternative activity where you've already got fuel. And I'll go to the third one. Now you'll be saying, Sumit, I go to the office. I have a task list of 10 things to complete in a day. I cannot use these two techniques. Some maybe I can. What can I do? For that, we have the famous guy, Mikhail, now don't ask me to pronounce him, Mikhail Chiksamali, okay, if that's the best pronunciation. He wrote the book called Flow, if you've read it. Have you? Flow. Okay, no, anyway, forget it. It's not exactly in flow. He did a lot more research beyond flow and I'm picking it up from there. He says, any activity, absolutely any activity can be fueled if you understand 
one law of nature. You know what's that law of nature? How many things can we focus on at one given time? One. It's one. Okay. You know why? Because our RAM. You know what's the capacity of a RAM? Your, your phone is 2 GB, 3 GB, 4 GB, 5 GB, whatever. You know what's the capacity of this RAM? Infinite? Okay. Now you're talking about the hard disk. I'm talking about the RAM. Okay, it's 120 dash. Give me the unit. 120? GB? KB? Okay, I'll give it to you. It's 120 bit. Chutasa. You'll be saying it's pretty nice of here. How can nature has given us such a small ram? Again, for your survival. You know why? Because when you're in the jungle and the lion was behind you, nature wanted you to just run towards the escape route. Nature did not want you to run and say, Oh, she's not bad. I'll check her out. Hey, good food here. No. Nature just wanted you to run. Hence, the ram has been kept very small, tiny. Now, you know what's the best part? There is nobody who's watching every activity that we are doing. Because nature works on patterns. But if you occupy any activity, any action, and you give that full 120 bit to that action, nature thinks you need fuel. And, sorry, nature doesn't think. Nature just releases fuel. Did you get the point? Nature just releases fuel. Nature thinks, see, when you were in the jungle and the lion was behind you, no matter how tired you are, you ran. If, if you are hungry and you had food, you didn't care. You just ran. Why? Because you got fuel. You can create that same fuel by doing it the other way around. Just put your full focus on that 120 bit and fuel gets released. Now look at the brilliance of this guy, Mikhail Csikszentmihalyi. He said, you can take any activity and fuel it. Why? Any activity requires either skill or challenge. You know when you utilize the full 120 bit? When, when that activity requires high skill and high challenge. When both are high, boom, fuel will be released. Got the point? Example it now. When you started driving the car for the first time, you didn't enjoy it so much, by the way. You know why? Because your skill was very low, challenge was very high. You were experiencing anxiety. Your 120 bit wasn't being utilized. Maybe a very small part was being utilized. Then you started enjoying the car a little bit more. But you enjoyed the car the most. You know when? When both were high. When absolutely both were high. I mean, you enjoyed driving the car so much, you didn't mind dropping your mother-in-law. I mean, are you getting it? It was so massive. But later, you know what happened? You stopped enjoying it. Why? Because what, what, what reduced? Challenge. Challenge reduced. And that's what happened. So ladies and gentlemen, that is how you fuel. That is how you fuel. Three ways of fueling. Anchoring. Can, can, can we just summarize this? Anchoring. Number two is alternative activity. Or third is 120 bit by either increasing your challenge or your skill and we can go into details there's so much to talk about this and then when you go to quadrant 4 the only problem with quadrant 4 is it can come down to quadrant 3 why can you tell me why we just now spoke about it challenge will reduce if challenge will reduce automatically it will come down makes sense so how do you keep it there by just increasing the challenge by changing the stimulus Higher bar. Raise the bar. Make sense? Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what I want to do is, I want to now do the final bit. Okay? Um, can we take 15 minutes and then done? Because this final bit is like really important. Chalega? Everybody is fine? Huh? So, chalo. Just give me 15 minutes more and I'll tell you how we can utilize this. And how all those questions, how you can get real change happening first in your life, and how you can have real change happening in your L&D efforts, okay? By doing just this analysis, and by the way, I've just opened a small part of it to you, which is still a pretty significant part. By just this analysis, can you tell where a person's life is heading? Let's say even in the corporate world. Okay. Let's say we have got a person who is spending from 9 to 5 or 9 to 6, and in fact, you are in Mumbai, so 9 to 8, whatever. Huh? In his entire day, 
he spends 30% of his time in quadrant 1, 30% in quadrant 2, 30% in quadrant 3 and only 10% in quadrant 4. Ladies and gentlemen, tell me how is this guy's life in the, cop in the office? Bad? How productive will he be? Low? Will he be doing a lot of overtime? You bet. You know why? Bechare ka life dekho na. 60% of the time he is in pain. To escape the pain he is going here, 10% is keeping alive. You know how this looks? If we have a task list in the morning, 1, 2, let's say there are 10 tasks. If 8 of them are Q3 and 2 of them are Q4, this is how it looks. These 2 tasks he will finish in no time. Even before he writes the task list, those two tasks are over. Why? Can you tell me the answer? Why? Because there is so much fuel for the task. Another example of fuel is when your kids are playing or whoever has kids in the society. Shamko, kaise khelte hain wo? Kitna dorte hain? Yahoo, yahoo, yahoo. Kya mehnat hai kya unke liye? No, there is so much fuel. You know mehnat kya hogi? You tell them sit. That is mehnat. Not running around. Because there is so much fuel. Remember everything in, energy, uh, in nature is fuel and energy. Now what this guy has to do is very simple. He says, my God, I am struggling every day because of such kind of tasks. Q3. Remember your task list will only have Q3s and Q4s. All your L&D efforts and all the goals will be either Q3s and Q4s. You will never have Q1s and Q2s in task list or goals. Like I have never seen a task list in which somebody has written, Achar sutte marenge. <laughs> you don't have to write man. Fair enough, it's only Q3s or Q4s. Now if this guy says, hey, that's the problem. And he takes action by action, not all, just a few. He starts fueling them. Let's talk about the worst mundane, mundane action. Sending that dirty, stupid report to my boss. Either infuse pleasure anchoring, ho gaya to acha hai. Alternative, I don't like to make report, I like to coach, so I coach somebody, he makes the report. Fine, we can do all those things. If both don't work, he simply has to utilize 120 bit. How do you utilize this? Report is not a report. Increase the challenge. What's the story behind the report? You can do so many things. Okay? But if he does one of them, he starts fueling it. He starts fueling it, he can start steadily converting Q3s into Q4s. If he does it the other way around, we have only two Q3s and now eight Q4s. You know how this life looks? It looks completely different. This 30 doesn't remain 30. This 30 now becomes 10. And this 10 becomes 30. If this becomes 30, what will happen to the other quadrants? There's one quadrant which will automatically reduce. Which is that quadrant? Two, because the best antidote of quadrant 2 is quadrant 4. You may actually have a reduction here. This might become 10 and this might become now 50. Now of course, now just take my word for it because we haven't done anything on emotional resilience today. But even this 30 will reduce. This might become 15. This will become 15. Now this becomes 65%. Now tell me ladies and gentlemen, if this is A and this is B, is there a difference in their lives? Now look at A and B. Who's more productive? Who's more relaxed? Who is finishing work on time? You know, if it's in quadrant four, he might even finish the work on time. He might actually finish the work at three o'clock, four o'clock. And that guy may end up giving God knows how much overtime. He might still not be able to finish it. Okay, this is a simple analysis. For? For an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur to, my God, absolutely. An entrepreneur cannot even afford to have Q3s. Right. An entrepreneur necessarily needs to have Q4s. Fuel to chahiye chahiye bhai. Got it? Ab. If you understood this simple analysis. Now let's see how you can easily put this in action. 
Now these are the last 10 minutes and these 10 minutes are all yours. I'm going to introduce one simple system here. We call this the traction map. Now of course there are various versions of it. I'm giving you the simplest of all. Okay. Let's say you want to achieve any goal in life. I'm going to talk about two examples. A life goal and a KRA goal. Is that okay? Let's talk about a life goal. A simple life goal. Um, life goal can be health goal, relationship goal, finances goal. Let's take a simple easy one. Konsa le? Health le? Okay. Now I don't know what is your health goal. But jo bhi hai. Let's say your health goal is to... Bata dijiye sir. What is your health goal? So let's say your goal is, I want to be X, Y, Z kgs in weight. Done? Simple goal. Bhai or beno, please look at me and tell me if you want to achieve such a goal, how many patterns do you need to build? How many in number? How many? You would be surprised. Maybe two is good enough. But these are broad words. When I say two patterns, let's say if he writes, I go 10 kilometers or 5 kilometers or 2 kilometers for a jog every day. And I eat 3 meals a day and nothing in between. Can I just write these two? And if I start fueling these actions, won't law of nature take over? And I'll achieve my goal? Right? That's the way it happens. Let's talk about KRAs. Now, now this is the big one. Okay, KRAs. Any KRA that you have, to achieve that KRA, you would need to do hundreds of actions. Let's take an example of 100. Okay? Every KRA, and by the way, all of us have by and large 5 KRAs. And that's a law, I mean. And can I say that your top 2 KRAs would be most of it? The remaining are nothing but supporting. Can we say that? Now, if you want to achieve your KRA, what do you need to do? Simple. Write your KRA on the top. Now, for that, assumption is you have to take 100 actions. But here's the good news. Out of those 100 actions, many of them, let's say 50 of them, are once in a while actions. They are occasional actions. Or they are only one-time actions. You don't need any fueling for them. They happen. Like joining the gym is, is never a problem. <laughs> Getting it? So, chalo, 50 of them are automatically taken care of. Now, the remaining 50, do you realize there's a 90-10 rule? 10% 10 actions give you 90% results. Now, out of those 50, all you need to do is take those 5 actions and start fueling them. Now you write those five actions here. Look at your current consistency. If your current consistency is low, what does it mean? What kind of action is that? Which category action it is? Quadrant three. That means there is no fuel for it. If you don't have any fuel for that action, will you achieve that goal? No. All you have to do is fuel it. When the consistency becomes very high, Will law, law of nature take over and will you achieve the goal? Yes. Absolutely yes. That's what it is. So what I would like you to do is just think three things. Shall we do that right now? Can I just zip and get you to do it? Uh, you have a notepad in front of you? Hmm? Let's do this. Let's do this as the final closing activity. Okay? Let's, let's do it. Hmm? Uh, like a professor, let me do a two minute job. Let me take you through the steps of using a traction map. Okay? For your KRA. And then let me give you two, three minutes to create one traction map for your life area. Okay? So let's look at traction maps first. Now, KRA first. Okay? You need this? Okay, good. So, number one, step number one write your KRA on top of the traction map. Okay? Step number two. 
list down all the actions that you need to take to achieve that carry. Got it? Let's go to step number three. Step number three is discard all the actions which are once in a while actions or only a one time action. You don't need any fueling for those. Step number four of all the repetitive actions choose the top 10% actions which will give you 90% results. Got it? Step number five take those actions and put them on the traction map which is what you are seeing on the screen and step number six do an honest assessment of what is your current consistency on a scale of 1 to 10 how regularly do you do it if your consistency is low it simply means it simply means guys you don't have fuel it's a quadrant 3 and then if you don't have fuel there are only three ways to fuel the action if you fuel it you are automatically going to achieve the results. Got it? Now what I am going to ask you to do is now help yourself. Choose, now go to the fresh page. Okay? Choose one area of life. One, health, finances or relationships or whatever where you want to achieve some, some goal. Got it? Write it. Okay? Wrote and the goal is like I want to be XYZ kgs in 5 months. I want to have a fulfilling relationship with XYZ whatever it is. Just write it on top. Done? The moment I have written it, remember it has to be in present tense. So when I said I want to that is wrong. It should be I am whatever. Because you are talking about fueling the RB. Right? RB does not understand anything except present. Step number 2 write down consistent actions that you need to take and limit it to maximum four actions and if you make it lesser it's even better you hear less is more just write down two or three actions and the actions have to be in present tense absolutely present tense they have to be actions they can't be outcomes like you can't say exercise no you have to say I walk 10 kilometers every day or 5 kilometers every day <coughs> just write down two or three nothing major okay now do an honest assessment and what is your current consistency right next to that on a scale of 1 to 10, how consistent are you with the action? Now that is a mirror. That tells you whether you are going to achieve that goal or not. <laughs> is that fair? But now the best news, if your consistency is low, the last two hours, we have just spoken about that, how to fuel it up. Now tell me, if you fuel up those actions, and if you make the consistency high, 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10s, will you achieve those goals? By sheer law of nature? We don't have to be smart. We just need to know how to use this machine. That's all. Make sense? Okay guys, that's it. All I can say as a, my last few lines what we spoke today is not rocket science. Okay? It's actually a pretty simple science. In fact, we feel guilty that we haven't gone out and promoted it a lot. <laughs> I mean, we feel pretty dumb that we haven't gone out and, and, and actually spread it across. What we did today was just a small attempt to just share it. 
but what we have been doing for the last 47 years now is is I mean we are a learning and development organization but necessarily what we shared with you in two hours of course two hours is just a small snippet we take organizations leaders salespeople take them through this and this is a small part I gave you there's a much bigger part to it we give them the science and at the end of it no matter what learning we give them we blend the science along with that learning and our goal always is only one at the end of the intervention have we been able to create new patterns of behavior we call it sustenance like you call it sustenance and this is where the rubber meets the road this is where the real change happens make sense right um, now we would love to do multiple things with you we would love to come and talk with you and all that but I just have one request to you okay uh, if you understood all of this great uh, if you haven't understood a small part of it please feel free just give us a call we'll come for no other purpose we'll not even talk about anything we'll just we just want you to understand this and once you understood this the best thing that can happen according to us is you take this and you start attaching it with your L&D initiatives or even better if you start taking this and start teaching it to your people huh now for that we are very very happy to even share some of the soft copies with you okay just let us know I mean uh, Ishan or, or, or uh, Harish or Amit will be there in touch with you just let them know we are happy to share this with you uh, the happiest moment will be according to me when you start sharing this with other people and those people come back to you I don't know when um, one year later two years later ten years later and they come back to you and say one thing um, and, and that's a beautiful thing by the way you know do you realize that human beings have this instinct that we will do much more for other people than what we'll ever do for ourselves you realize that and that makes our species a very beautiful species I mean think about it your parents did way more for you than what they did for themselves like you would do much more for your children than what you would ever do for yourselves in fact a lot of times we will do much more for strangers than what we do for ourselves all I'm saying is use this beautiful instinct share this with as many people as you can now the best reward for you is what I was talking about your best reward would be that person will come back to you someday repeating one year two year ten years later and will end up telling you sir ma'am do you remember you taught me some things about pattern and all that I was able to use it and because I used it now I'm able to do so many things I just called to say two things I was remembering you and second I called to say thank you the day you get that thank you I'm sure you'll realize is the sweetest reward you can get am I right cool absolutely so all I can say from my side is ladies and gentlemen the fact that you all came and you gave two and a half hours or whatever huh? Uh, and for the fact that you are such wonderful people from me and my entire team thank you so much for coming thanks a lot okay and